Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India back to aircraft structures one this is professor anubhas from aerospace engineering iit kharagpur we are uh, continuing the lectures for the week 3 or the third week in the last two lectures we have uh, covered plane truss uh, and this lecture we will uh, start with the space structures Plane truss is uh, something where all the members and forces are in one plane. Uh, it may be any plane x, y, y z or z x any plane or may be in any arbitrary plane, but in case of space structures it is uh, in more than one plane. Practically if we look at uh, all structures are space structures. So, we need to consider those loads, but uh, in general we do not uh, consider the outer plane loads uh, and uh, we take components and try to make the analysis easy, easy and uh, accordingly we do, but there are some cases uh, where we need to analyze uh, uh, space structures. So, let us get introduced to the space structures and uh, try to follow what uh, the pro procedure is. Uh, this is uh, as usual the recapitulation slide uh, already I have covered many times, but it is always better to say the salient points. We have learned the history that is very important I feel as you, you will grow older you will feel that history is very, very important. So, uh, not only history of solid mechanics or structural analysis, but also we have uh, seen the development of uh, fixed wing aircrafts. And then uh, we have come to the loads uh, encountered by aircrafts that is very, very important in, in comparison to the structural analysis, because all the loads has to be has to be borne by the structures successfully, efficiently and then uh, that will serve the purpose very well. So, as already we I have mentioned in the last class we have covered the plane truss and today we will cover space structures uh, and mainly truss we will cover though it is written structures, but uh, uh, truss in the sense where transverse loads are not there in the structural members, structural members are predominantly uh, considered as a, a member which is two force member, but in one, the example what we will solve there it will also experience some torsional moment. So, in that sense we may call this as structures not as truss, but the analysis procedures is uh, similar you can easily uh, go to wherever you want. Okay, as a general introduction, let us uh, try to get introduced with the problem equation space structures. Equations of equilibrium most is most necessary thing we need to find out the equation of equations of equilibrium to solve problems. Most structures must be designed to resist loads acting in more than one plane. This is what uh, I was uh, telling you a, a few minutes back, but uh, in general we reduce it uh, to a plane structure, so that uh, problems becomes easy. Consequently, the structures are actually space structures. So, all structures are actually space structures that is what is mentioned here. Although in many cases the loads in each plane may be considered independently 
and the structures are analyzed by the method of analysis of coplanar structures. So, this is uh, important we many times try to reduce the problem length understanding and we solve it in this way. When it is necessary to consider uh, sorry when it is necessary to consider simultaneously the forces acting in more than one plane the method of analysis are no more difficult, but it is often more difficult to visualize space geometry of the structure. This visualization creates real problem and uh, this uh, uh, I would like to take the opportunity to say something more in this point and this is the reason it is very, very difficult uh, to solve uh, by visual observation uh, the space structures and that has uh, initiated the analysis of all space structures with help of finite element analysis where three dimensional geometries are created in CAD softwares and it, it, it is easy to visualize and to get the uh, force components and moment components. In an analysis of space structures, it is desirable to draw several views of the structure with the forces shown in all views. So, unless we draw several views and show the forces, it is difficult. The equilibrium of any free body is in space is defined by six equations, three equations of forces and three equations of moments. This already we have discussed once or twice, we have brought in again as a reminder. The components of force are this force from here to here in space along three mutual perpendicularly perpendicular axis x, y, z may be obtained from the following equation. So, it is simple resolution of the vector r in x direction alpha cos alpha component is coming f x is equals to r cos alpha, f y is equals to r cos beta this and f z is equals to r gamma r cos gamma, where alpha beta and gamma are the angle between the force and the x y and z axis respectively as shown in the figure. The figure shows it very nicely, but it is difficult to, to visualize these angles uh, in, in real problem that really creates a big issue. We will see how, how do we solve it. The basic principle is this, but we will use in a different way so that it, it becomes easier to understand and solve. When the three components are known, the resultant may be obtained from the following equation. This is well known equation, I do not think it requires some explanation. If the resultant uh, force or one of its component is found, the remaining components may be obtained from the geometric relation r by l, r by divided by the length of the vector and f, f x by x in this, this component f y by y, f z by y, z where x, y, z, this is z are the components of length L along, along the mutually perpendicular reference axis. Better you, we correct this here, this is z. Okay. How to take moment, consider moment, that is really important issue we need to learn. Uh, moment in space structure, uh, the moment of a force about a line is obtained by projecting the force to a plane perpendicular to the line and finding the moment of the component of the force in that plane. Apparently, there are two things I should mention about a line. In two dimensional or plane frames uh, structures, we were taking moment about a point not about a line. So, this you please note that it is about a line and what do we need to do? We need to consider 
the component of the force on a plane which is perpendicular to the line about which we are trying to consider the moment. So, let us proceed for the description. The force P in the figure has component P2 parallel to axis of moment, this is axis of moment, this is axis of moment we may say O, o prime. and P 1 in a plane perpendicular to the axis of moment. So, this plane what we see this plane is perpendicular to this axis of moment. The moment of the force about the line is P 1 cross D. So, D is the perpendicular distance from this, this uh, P 1 force component to the axis of about which we are trying to find out the moment. Since the component P 2 has no moment about the line, so this will not have any moment because it is in the same direction. Another point you, you should do, uh, monitor here that see cons with this component we can easily have a plane with this line and this component of the force can exist on a plane. So, that is the reason it cannot have a moment about that plane uh, about that line. Whereas, this is on a plane which is perpendicular this to this O O prime. So, it is having a moment. So, looking at this uh, simple principle if you keep it in mind it helps to solve the problem. It may be noted that may be noted that a force has no moment about any line that is in the same plane as the force. That is what uh, I said it in a different way. Okay. A problem, a problem is of a landing gear. Landing gear is having three components. This is the main component with which the wheel is attached. These are two supporting members. So, dimensions are given here as well as it is given here. This view is uh, if we look at this view is uh, if you look at from this side, this side I want to mean uh, it is on yes it is here V D plane and this view is on the S V plane this way. So, this view is this one and this view is this one. So, please keep it in mind that these are the two views landing gear problem find the forces at points A, B and C from for the landing gear shown in the figure. Members O B and O C are two force members this O B and O C are two force members. Member O A resists bending and torsion, but point A is hinged by a universal joint. So, that the member can carry torsion, but no bending in any direction at this point. So, this member cannot carry bending, it can only carry torsion. So, what are the six we have six equations of equilibrium. What are the six unknowns? It is mentioned here. Uh, one unknown, the first unknown is force here, second unknown is force on this, the two force member. Third one, we may say that this is the torsion acting on this member, and there may be three more forces. acting at this we may consider those as A, 
d a s and a v. Uh, please do not keep it in keep in your mind the directions because for problem solving direction may be the other way taken in the drawing we will follow that drawing, but for principle to understand what are the unknowns these are the unknowns and let us proceed to solve it. Okay. First about the torsion components. <coughs> First consider the components of the torsional couple at point A here. The resultant couple vector T shown in figure below must be along the member. So, it is along the member as I showed you in the last slide and it is it has components T V about vertical axis and T S uh, about the side axis. This is please you may note that this is vertical axis, this is drag axis, this is side axis. So, that way T v, T s and T is acting on this member. By proportion of consideration of component of vector T v by 40, T v by this member 40, T s by 30 and T by 50, T v this is the length we get a relation which is T v equals to 0.80, T s equals to 0.60. If you have problem understanding this relation you can easily think about resolving the T along two components. You can easily find out the cost components from these three known values. So, it is nothing but those cost components are considered and a ratio in that form it has been stated here. So, here we have a relation between comp components of torsion. Those components are shown in this figure. Here all the unknowns are also shown. As I mentioned, uh, there are three forces acting on A and we need to find out those forces and let us see slowly how do we get. As I mentioned previously that in the free body diagram, for the entire structure shown above, there are six unknown forces. So, six unknown forces are, these are components, do not take it that way, the torsion is the unknown and this actually the torsion acting on along this is the unknown and this is say A D A V A S 3 and this and this, these are the six unknowns. The forces at B and C act along the member, two force members. Therefore, there is only one unknown at each point. The force at A is unknown in direction, unknown in direction and must be considered as three unknown force components or as an unknown force and two unknown direction angles. Usually, it is more convenient to find the components after which the resultant force may be obtained from the relation R is equals to over root f x square f y square plus f z square. The couple T is also resolved into components about S and V that is what is shown here. Taking moment uh, about an axis through the point A and B. So, this is what uh, we are doing that M A B is written you see we are considering moment about this line. Okay. That is why M A B is written here. So, sum of moments, moments about A B. What are the components will come? Since 4000 is written here, this is coming, 36 where from 36 is coming, this distance is 6, this is 6, in the previous diagram it is noted, that is the reason 36, this is 30 plus 6, 36 and it is acting upward, this 4000 is acting upward, that is the reason it is it is uh, 36. 
then multiplied by C 40 by this is cos component only C is on this plane the front plane this is on this plane the C is acting. Okay. So, if it is acting on that plane uh, about how much what is the perpendicular distance that perpendicular distance is 30 this is the perpendicular distance as it is mentioned, but the component component is 40 by 50 from the previous diagram or if we consider uh, the angle it comes 40 by 50. Fifty is this length because this is thirty and this is this is also twenty thirty. That is the thirty by thirty square top portion. So this is fifty, and accordingly forty by fifty comes as the component. Now it may arise in your mind why thousand is not considered. That gives us the value, but why thousand is not considered? Thousand is from pound is in the same direction of a b. So, it is acting in the same direction. So, it does not have any component o b is passing through a b this two this is the two force member this is passing through the axis about which we are considering moment. So, it is not having any moment component that is the reason thousand and this a b b b force is not having any component and we get the value of c at the end of this exercise. Okay. Let us uh, move to the next slide. In the next slide what we have is all the unknown forces and the 4000 pound load act through member O A. The torsional couple T may be found by taking moment about line O A. If we consider a mo moment about this line then component of these these uh, the forces of A are getting cancelled because it is on that line. So, uh, we do not need to consider that B is also acting or crossing that line. So, there would not be any component of from B, C also there would not be any component only the component will remain from this, this 4000 pound also will not have any component. Why? That 4000 pound is on the same plane as the O A is. That is the reason it do not have. This 4000 pound is actually acting on this plane and O A is also in that plane. So, this 4000 pound will not have, in, have any component in that plane. So, the torsional couple T may be found by taking moments about line O A. The 1000 pound drag load has a moment arm of 4.8 inch that 4.8 inch is shown in the previous figure. Uh, if you do simple um, geometric calculation you can here, here it is shown, uh, here it is shown 4.8, but where from do we get this is 6 inch from the 6 inch component in this direction is having 4.8. So, that is what is used here and so what we have is the as shown in the figure and we are considering moment about A O that means about this axis no component of A is coming there, no component of 4000 pound is coming there, no component of B, no component of C. So, easily we can find out 1000 cross 4.8 this way it is acting is, is the contribution to the torsional moment and that is equals to 4800 inch pound. And as we have already found out the components uh, of T V and T S, those are 0 0.8 which is equals to 3840 inch pound and T S is equals to again there is a typographical mistake, please excuse me, this is T uh, may be written more precisely if I can. Okay. So, that gives us the force 2880 inch pound. So, the reasons uh, why 4000 pound is not coming that I have already explained because it is on the same plane vertical load is coplanar to A O I have mentioned again for more clarification. Okay. The other forces are obtained from the following equations which are chosen so that only one unknown appears in each equation. 
So, uh, we are considering moment about OS, OS is this axis and what we have AD into 40, AD which one is AD? This is AD, other are not having because this is on the same plane, this is also on the same plane, only this is out of plane and acting perpendicular to this plane that is the reason AD, AD is coming there and these are definitely, these, these two are definitely crossing that line, so this axis, so there that won't be, there won't be any component. So, considering that equation, what we have AD into 40, 40 is this length or this length and we have AD is equals to 42 pound. The subscripts OS uh, originate designates an axis through the point O in the side direction. As we have mentioned it here and uh, we need to continue for the other forces. Okay. So, we are considering equilibrium in the drag direction, summation of F d equals to 0. If we consider summation of F d equals to 0, it gives us the force B because uh, in this direction this is known these are orthogonal to that direction whereas, this will have a component in that direction, this also will have a component in that direction, but we, we have already found out this force, this is known force, this is known force that is 6000. So, that is the reason the component of B we can find out, but this 53.9 where from it comes? It comes from this simple calculation. The length this is 53.9 where O B square is equals it is a continuation. So, O B square is equals to this and uh, that helps us to make a component uh, in, in this direction horizontal direction. So, that is the reason this is the 20 and this is the length and that gives us the component in, in drag direction. The other component is this is 30 and this is the fi uh, sorry 50, this is, uh, this is the 50 length, this is 50 that gives us the component here and uh, 1072, this is 72 already known and 1000 is acting here. So, as a result we get the force B. And similar way, if we consider in the S direction, summation of forces in the S direction, we find out the force A S. As I have described in very well the previous equation, please try to understand these equations, why this component is coming. And definitely you need to spend some time to understand this equation also. I would suggest you find out this component A V and find out the vertical force A V. So, considering that A S and A V are known following the similar logic you can easily understand the components of forces in this direction and you can find out the force A V. And as a check since it is a three dimensional problem and it is better to have a check summation of A V we are we have checked and we are considering the moment components about A V, this, this axis and we are trying to see whether it gives us the moment 0 or not. So, you may consider that as a homework, if it is uh, not clear we may discuss, we may solve. So, with that note uh, let us uh, conclude today's lecture. Uh, in the next lecture again, we will solve one more truss problem and interesting landing gear problem with landing gear components, concepts of olio strut and all those we will discuss and we will continue further. So, references are all same references and what we have learned from these slides are these uh, space structures introduced to space structures and we have solved a landing gear problem, we have learned uh, how to consider three dimensional structures to for the solution and uh, that way we, we conclude today's lecture and uh, hope you will join back again in the next lecture uh, that is uh, another space structure problem we will solve. Thank you for attending this lecture.